Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at how array lists are stored in memory. So first of all, it's important to note that array lists hold objects, not primitive data types such as int or char. So for example, if we want to create a new array list to hold integers, we need to use the integer object type with the capital I rather than using the primitive data type int. Uh, so here we have I list, which is an array list of integers. Uh, and underneath, we've added four items to iList using the ArrayList add method, which just adds items to the end of the list. Uh, and we then display the list here. So if I run this, we can see that iList contains four items, 10, 70, 20, and 90, just as we've added here. Now, if I put this in the debugger, then we can take a look at what's going on underneath the hood in the memory. So here we have iList, it's of type ArrayList, and if we expand this, we can see iList contains four objects, and each object refers to an instance of integer. So as an example, if we expand object zero, we can see that it refers to an integer object with an instance variable value of 10. Uh, if we expand object one, we can similarly see that it refers to an integer object with an instance variable value of 70. So moving on to our second example, uh, here we have the rectangle class, which we'll be using for this example. If we go back to the client and just take a look at this section of code, then we can see here we have a new array list that holds rectangle objects. And underneath we have two different methods for adding objects to the array. So first of all, we can create a new rectangle object like so. So here we've created a new rectangle called R1 with a width of 5 and a height of 2. Uh, we can then add our new uh, rectangle objects to our array list using the add method from above. Alternatively, we can actually create a new rectangle inside of the add method like so. Uh, so here we've created a new rectangle with a width of 7 and a height of 5. Now if we pop this through the debugger, we can see here that we have two rectangle objects, R1 and R2, each with a distinct ID of 30 and 32 respectively. Now, if we expand our list, we can see actually that uh, object zero in our list refers to the exact same instance of rectangle as R1, uh, and likewise object one in our list refers to the same instance of rectangle as R2. And we can see this easily because the IDs are the same. So we can see object 0 in our list has an ID of 30, as does R1. And similarly, uh, object 1 in our list has an ID of 32, as does R2. Alright, so moving on to our final example. What we have here is a new array list mega list, which is an array list of array lists of integer objects. Uh, and what we've done underneath is we've added i list to mega list. Um, i list was the original integer array list that we uh, created above. Uh, we've then created a new array list, i list 2. Uh, we've added three values to i list 2. And we've then added iList2 to, to MegaList. So MegaList now contains two uh, array lists, iList and iList2. Now if we take a look at this in the debugger, we'll see that uh, MegaList, if we expand this, contains two objects, 0 and 1, with IDs of 19 and 34. Now we can see that iList also contains an ID, uh, sorry, has an ID of 19. And iList2 refers to an array list with an ID of 34. So once again, we can see that object 0 in MegaList refers to the same uh, instance of array list as iList, and object 1 refers to the same instance as iList2. We can also expand this further. If we expand uh, object 1 in MegaList, we can see that object 0 refers to an instance of an integer object with an ID of 38. Likewise, if we expand iList2, object 0 in iList2 refers to an integer object with an ID, again, of 38. Uh, so both uh, object 0 here and object 0 here refer to the same instance of an integer object. In this case, it's the object that we added right here. You can see 
uh, with a value of 60. Uh, so that's how ArrayLists are stored in memory. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you found this helpful.